What's up guys? Today I've got my hands on one of the most powerful mini PCs we have tested on the channel so far. So this is the Geekom A7. It's currently priced around $799, which I think is a very competitive price, considering the build, the design, the powerful specifications, and ample connectivity, along with the upgrade options, which I will be showing you later in the video. Now, first of all, let's quickly check out the specs. Now, the Geekom A7 is powered by the AMD Ryzen 9 7940HS, which is a 4 nanometer octa-core clocked at 4 GHz base and up to 5.2 GHz turbo. For graphics, we have the AMD 780 based on the new RDNA3 architecture. Furthermore, we have 32 gigs of DDR5 RAM, upgradable to a maximum of 64 gigs. This also has a 2 terabyte M.2 NVMe SSD drive installed. You get Windows 11 Professional pre-installed and ready to go. This does support quad 4K display output. You've got a built-in smart cooling fan and the maximum supported resolution is up to 8K. Now inside the box you will find a user manual, customer service card, you get an HDMI cable, a power cable and a rather nice compact power supply and I'll give you the close-up of the voltage information. So you've got a very nice smart design finished in this space grey colour. You've got the Geekom logo engraved on top and uh, the entire body is made from metal. I'm getting a real Apple Mac mini vibe from this. The build quality and the curved corners is giving me a real Apple Mac mini vibe from this. You can see the back plate is made from plastic and you've got plastic at the bottom base. So very attractive design. On the front, we've got two USB 3.2 Gen 2 ports. We've got a combo headphone slash microphone jack. You've got a power button. If we keep going, you've got some vents on the side. And on the back, we've got power socket, a USB 4 Type-C port, we've got an HDMI 2.0, 2.5 gigabit Ethernet, we've got another USB 3 port, we've got a USB 2 port, we've got another Type-C port, and that is USB 3, and that one is USB 4. And over here at the bottom, we've got another HDMI 2.0 port. So this mini PC does display quad 4K display output. So you can have two monitors connected via HDMI, and you can have two other monitors connected via the Type-C ports. And if we keep going on this side, you've got more vents and a full-size SD card slot in between. And that will bring us back to the front. And here is a quick look at the bottom of the mini PC. Now this mini PC does have a smart cooling system. You've got an intake on the right and intake on the left, and then you've got an exhaust on the back. So now before we proceed, let me quickly show you the internals. So you need to remove the rubber feet from the bottom, and there are four in total and behind which you will find four screws. Let's get them open, shall we? Okay, so when you take the lid off, be careful. There is a wire that you do not want to pull off. Okay, you are now removing four more screws, one, two, three, and four, to access the internals. So let's go. Now again, there is a connection for that Wi-Fi antenna, so I'm not gonna try and take the whole thing off. Oh no. Okay, so you can see, I did exactly what I didn't wanna do. Um, I have disconnected the Wi-Fi cable, so I haven't damaged anything, I've disconnected it. Um, so I'm going to I am going to show you how to connect that in a second. Okay, so the internals we've got crucial branded DDR5 RAM. You can see there's 16 gigs per slot, and the maximum supported is actually 64 gigs. So you can put 32 gigs per slot. And here is the two terabyte SSD, and it is Acer branded. I am going to remove this now because I need to fit the Wi-Fi cable back on. So we're going to remove this very carefully. So that cable, which I tugged off, that cable came out from there, from that connection. I need to take off this adhesive very carefully without breaking it. So you're taking off that sticky piece of plastic. So we now have access. So I'm glad this happened to me, just so I can show you what to expect when you open the case. So I'm taking off that piece of tape, which will then give me more slack to play with. You can see what's happened here now, so I can put this on. Very carefully. 
there it clicks in so you know it's seated properly place that sticky plastic back on to secure the connections from undoing itself and the ssd can be installed through that in place now i read there was space for a two and a half inch sata i don't see an enclosure for it or a connection i thought it might be this but that's just a hollow sticker there is no sata connection that i can see that you, where you can plug in a hard drive so putting that metal plate back on so i'm not even going to bother putting that sticker back on I'd rather have more slack when I'm opening the case in the future. Okay, put the back cover back on. And again, and secure with four screws. So very easy to access DIY upgrade options. Just be careful of that Wi-Fi cable when you open the case. Other than that, laid out very nicely. Okay, so now we're going to get this hooked up to my TV and capture card. And we're going to find out exactly what it can do. I'll be right back. First of all, I ran a boot up speed test. And you can see on screen exactly how long it took to boot up from a cold start. Now, before I do anything on this PC, I just want to show you all the default settings. So wallpaper, system properties, and system storage. So this is Windows 11 Professional, offering you a full PC experience in a mini compact size. The system is powerful enough to run all your regular Windows applications and games, and it comes with all the usual Windows apps, including the Windows App Store. Okay, so let's first of all check out the system properties. So just to confirm, AMD Ryzen 9 7940HS with 32 gigs of RAM, 64-bit operating system, Windows 11 Professional, and if we just check out the activation information, you can see it's activated and ready to go. So system storage info, we have a two terabyte drive, 1.86 terabytes are actually usable, and you can see how much free space we'll begin with. I've not installed anything yet, so this is what you can expect when you first power on. Now the second drive you're seeing is my 128 gigabyte SanDisk flash drive, which contains all my 4K samples, which is exactly what we're going to be testing next. So let's play some 4K video samples from a USB drive and see how it performs. So the first video we're playing is a high bitrate 4K Jellyfish demo. This one is 160 megabits per second and you can see it's playing back absolutely fine, super smooth with no issues. I also tested out the 180 megabits per second high bitrate Jellyfish demo. And you can see that is also playing back fine. And the real test is 400 megabits per second high bitrate jellyfish demo. And you can see that is also playing back super smooth as expected. So now I'm playing back some 4K60 samples with various HDR formats. And you can see they're all playing back super smooth with no stuttering or buffering issues. The samples I'm testing are varied. They're different file formats and different HDR formats. And they're working fine straight out of the box using the default media player. So I didn't even have to download any software or codecs to make this work. All right, so that was 4K videos from a USB drive. Now, now we're moving on to some YouTube streaming, starting off with the usual Costa Rica demo, and YouTube does support 4K60 with HDR. The mission of the vaults should be important to everyone. I think we're all going to die. Hold on your ass! George? Once more. What have you done to all? So next up, I tested Netflix from the web browser, and you can see 4K streaming is supported. Okay, so now we're moving on to some gaming, starting off with GTA 5.
beautiful. Thank you. Enjoys dishing out this punishment. Oh my gosh, what impact! Bam! Staved off that attack. And an impactful display of offense we just witnessed there. And that was a well targeted attack. And he keeps his focus on an attack to that area. What a time! That attack had Brock putting every muscle. Brock Lesnar has him up. Control his opponent. What a Samoa drive. And that can keep track of him. So that brings us to our benchmarks beginning with Geekbench, single core score of 1992 and multi-core score of 12146. And in the Antutu benchmark test, we achieved an impressive 1.2 million. And in the CPU benchmark score by Passmark, we have achieved an impressive score of 30,546. So let's see how this compares to the other mini PCs of this year. So here is my top performing mini PC chart for 2024, allowing you to compare the prices, specs and features. And the ranking is based on Antutu benchmark scores. So higher the score, the more powerful the mini PC. And based on that, you can see that the Geekom A7 is truly the new king of the jungle and has achieved number one status on this chart. The power performance is absolutely impressive. Now you can view all my latest charts online at jigstech.com and read them at your leisure and completely free of charge. So there you have it guys, that was the new Geekom A7. Now this is a superb all-round mini computer. It's small enough to throw into your bag for easy travels. It can connect to up to four 4K displays at the same time, offering double Type-C and HDMI connections, and that includes one USB 4. The AMD Ryzen 9 7940HS is quite a remarkable high-performance chipset. I was amazed seeing that performance boost from the latest iteration of the 780M. The RDNA 3 architecture really does give you that performance boost whilst gaming and it's noticeable. Now the same games I've tested on the previous RDNA 2 version of the 780M and they never ran this good. So really loving that extra gaming power. Especially enjoyed PS3 emulation, it's never looked and played this smooth in previous AMD mini PCs. And of course you can play the latest AAA games from your Steam library, PC games etc. Now the cooling fan is quite effective, drawing cool air from both sides and you have an exhaust on the back for heat dissipation. I have had no throttling issues or overheating issues with this mini PC, no matter what I did or ran on it. 
The system automatically controls a fan and it will speed up and slow down as required. And it's not that noisy. Needless to say, this mini PC is good for everyday tasks like web browsing, office applications, coding, graphics, but also great for 4K video editing and AAA gaming, playing the most graphically intense latest games at either low or medium graphics, depending on the game. This is the mini PC I was waiting for and is most likely going to stay on my desk, giving me Windows 11 Professional when I need it. I love the space saving design and the actual build quality and design looks like a tiny Mac mini. So absolutely gorgeous design. Now 799 is the price tag for the most powerful mini PC of this size running Windows 11 Professional. There is a coupon code which I will share with you guys on screen and in the description box so you can save some cash if you're interested in picking this one up. Yes, I know 799 is not cheap. You could buy in comparison a more large, massive, full-size PC. But at the end of the day, you're paying that premium for the space-saving form factor. And the fact that you can upgrade this mini PC in the future makes the deal a bit more juicy and of course future-proof. And unlike the Mac Mini M2, which I have right here, you can't upgrade this Mac Mini. You are stuck with the storage and RAM that it comes with. And it has slowed right down on me now. I'm struggling to edit videos on this Mac Mini M2. And they cost around the same, but the Mac Mini M2 is much bigger and has less connectivity. So yes, this Geekom A7 is more powerful than my Mac Mini and much more useful and practical for my everyday use. So I hope you found this video useful. If you have any questions, feel free to ask away. If you want to see more of my latest and greatest unbiased tech reviews, hit the like button, sub to the channel and hit the bell icon. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you all in the next one. Thanks guys. Peace.